welcome back to the Cyber Gaming UK LOL League. We are ready for our second game of week two, day one, and it's between Thresh Vibes and Bus Driver Connor. I am Sona, and my co-caster is the beautiful, the wonderful, the magnificent, the marvellous, the gorgeous, the exceptional, the eccentric, and the similarly named Grosh. Thank you for that enchanting that's introduction. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit flushed. A little bit well. flushed here. Uh, look, man, Hyman Klinger was in the chat a couple of minutes ago. Maybe that's why you're flushed, as opposed maybe, to me complimenting maybe, you. Maybe, you know, he's just, he's like a limpet. He kind of just cl clings to me, and I just feel very <laughs> different. I feel different The problem now. with Hyman Klinger is that he clings to you for a little while, then gets what he wants, and then you know, like, it's broken from then on, so you can't really, he doesn't come back. Cause yeah, exactly. Because he to hold on to. It's all torn. And no, he just leaves me with this kind of hole in my heart as well. Oh, in your heart. Okay. In, in my in my heart. <laughs> well, we are all those all those are watching. Game. I may or may not have done the uh, apostrophe. Ah, okay. Let's see. <clears throat> so into picks and bands. Picks and bands. Exciting, exciting stuff. I'm excited. I definitely am. Uh, mere focus is going to be the first banner for the Thresh Vibe team. Uh, actually, I don't mind saying either of these teams' names, so it's great. Because, like, last game, it was like Minge Berry Crunch, where you don't really want to say Minge too much, because that's just a bit... A bit disgusting. It's not, it's not very PG-13, is it? No, well, neither of us are either 13. Or, actually, sometimes I go to PG-13 movies just to see who's there, and most of the time it's adults, actually. Yes. And, and that disappoints me. <laughs> and they wonder why we're both on registers. I think yep. that's really the, really the question here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. I want to go to children's medicine, so it's probably not the best thing to say such things. Probably <laughs> not. Uh, so, picks and bands, support bands coming out. Morgana, Braun, pretty standard, solid bands. Uh, Morgana being our MVP last game. MVP. Uh, yeah, yeah, played superbly well. Those bindings were on point, but Hyman Klinger, as we said, was grabbing onto them as much as he could, and Jack exactly. as well. Expected. Clinging he to them. Nerfed. He was nerfed. He wasn't. Uh, actually, so was um, so was Braun as well. Yeah, but Braun is. It's his passive. Like they need, they. I know they nerfed his passive, and you only got four seconds to proc it now, as opposed to five. But it's the fact you can activate the passive on two different people, and then be like, oh, which one should I attack? Well, <laughs> the AD carry close. No, I'll go for the support. You kill the support, yeah. and then you go for the AD carry, who's still probably got your passive proc on him. Just yeah. kill him. And Winter yeah. spikes back up. It's, yeah, it doesn't matter because he's banned. Yeah. Anyway, Castle so, and Oriana bans as well coming out here. Oriana's a bit odd. I, well. I mean, Oriana's one of those champions who just has always consistently done well. Yeah. And the Yasuo band's pretty pretty much expected as well. First pick, Evelyn. First pick. First pick, Evelyn again. And uh, Evelyn's really risen into favour. Usually, like, you've got the holy triumvirate of, of junglers. And it's Evelyn, Elise, and... Excuse Lee me, Sin. there's a new, Newcastle Brown coming up. <laughs> my, uh, Evelyn, Elise, and Lee Sin. And I think it's because they... Both have two, they all have two E's in their name, and they've all got one L, and I think that's what you need to be a juggler. You have to have two E's and one L, and then you're perfect. <laughs> Are these like the mandatory letters? Yeah. That you, well, have you look at it, have. Evelyn, two E's, one L. Elise, two E's, one L. Yeah. Lee Sin, two E's. Yes, the E's are together, but one L as well. I can, I like this theory. I like this theory. Yeah. I and think... obviously the real reason is because they're all overpowered as fuck. But... <laughs> overpowered as <laughs> so... yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we've talked about this Caitlyn Nami lane um, outside of outside of chat. Uh, I actually talked about it with Niall with earlier. How I think this is the most obtuse, repulsive lane that you could ever possibly want yeah. to go against this bot lane. Um, and that's really because Caitlyn, while she hasn't really been changed and was kind of inadvertently buffed by the, um, by the itemization changes, yeah, has just kind of, rust. kind of just risen to power, just because everyone else is kind of just not as good, um, and just like her laning with Nami is just so easy and safe, and just so much harass with that, with the, with that E that Nami has there. Yeah, the Tide oh. Caller's blessing gives us so much extra damage, and it's yeah. magic damage as well. So you have to, you have to decide: Are you gonna, you know, get your early magic assist in your rooms, or are you gonna go for the early? armor yep. in your runes so it's very difficult to decide how you want to sort of itemize and pick your runes and masteries against that sort of lane because you can't go for the full out well i know there's a zyro i know there's an annie so i'm gonna get a lot of magic resist and just hope i can avoid the harass no because it's both coming from the one source but it's both magic and 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 nami damage. has that flexibility that she can level up her ebb and flow or yeah. that uh 
that Tycrawler's blessing. You can kind of choose. You have a little bit of um, you have a little bit of uh, movement within those abilities mm -hmm. because ultimately your bubble does the same as it's always going to do. It's that's yeah. that one point wonder. Um, and so you kind of got a little bit more flexibility on that, Nami. And if you don't need to sustain as much, you don't need the heals or or whatever. You can you can kind of go towards that Tycrawler's blessing, and that just with the headhunter as the the the, the headshot passive. Sorry. Yeah. It's just, it just, it's really difficult to trade back and trade back evenly with her having such long range as well. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult. And I like this Tristana pick up against it in some ways, but I also hate it in other ways, okay? Yeah. So the reasons I like it is because Tristana's E, her explosive shot, can deal grievous <laughs> wounds to an enemy. And so if you see Nami leveling up that uh, ebb and flow, the heal won't be as strong on that Caitlyn because she's got that grievous wounds passive on. However, of course, in the early game, <laughs> Caitlyn with that range is just going to outrange Tristana to the ends of the earth. And if they play that properly, she's not going to be able to get anywhere near her CS. No. And Until late game where she does get that bit stronger and is able to out, but, out range Caitlyn. But, and here's the, I think here's the big but, is this Alistair. Now, Alistair Tristana is a really all-in, hyper-aggressive level 2 lane, which is kind of what you don't want to go against as Caitlyn, because Caitlyn... Yeah works on this kind of sustained passive poke trading kind of stuff. You just, you, you chip away at them slowly over the time and you kind of, you wear them down. Alistair and Tristana, they're just going to fly straight in at you level two, you know, headbutt pulve with your e, with your explosive shot from Tristana and your, and your rocket jump. You do a lot of that damage at level two and that's kind of where Tristana can be scary. And if they can catch Nami, who's traditionally very weak um, in, terms of, in, in, in terms of her HP and her, and her baseline stats, could be could be a lot of problems. Could be it could be a very explosive bottom lane, certainly. <laughs> a very explosive bottom lane with someone with explosive shot. <laughs> uh, the difficulty for them then there is though, if they don't kill Nami straight away, she can bubble them and they're both on top of her. Yes. So they're both gonna get caught in the bubble. And Nami's of course one of the few champions in the early game who has that multi person stun along with Jax and uh, can't actually think of anyone else who has a multi person oh, Alistair, multi person knock up as well. So uh, anyway, moving away from the bottom lane, we've talked a lot about uh, bottom lane already. We do see a Vlad picked up in that top lane who's gonna hopefully, I really, really hope we see that troll pool coming out and we get a golden pee puddle because I haven't yes, seen a golden I have pee seen puddle this. yet. I have seen this because you can now use summoner spells whilst you're in um whilst you're in that can you teleport whilst you're in Sanguine Pool? I assume so because you can use summoner spells can't you? And you can also yeah. Zonyas while yes. you're in but you wouldn't be able to move if you started teleporting while in troll pool. Yeah so but you can super safe split push because yeah. uh, I think with the with the with the um, with the troll pool time, I think you've got maybe one second mm -hmm. that you they would have to cancel your your teleport pretty much. I think something like that without with the long with the the duration compared to the the yeah, the yeah, cast time of the uh, yeah. Troll pool. yeah cool. it would be. Yeah. Oh, an interesting matchup in mid lane as well, Fizz versus Ziggs. Now, Ziggs is very much skill shot dependent until he gets enough levels in that explosive minefield to be able to sort of zone with it, but you don't see that many people going for that early game because it's been nerfed recently, it doesn't stay on the ground for as long, doesn't quite do as much damage, especially to minions, so a, a good Ziggs against a bad... Uh, a good Fizz, sorry, against... A, well, that's going to be annoying. They're so similar in names. A good Fizz against a bad Ziggs really should win that lane out early even though he can be harassed with that extra range that Ziggs does have. I think if this Fizz is very aggressive in the first couple of levels, we could see him get a really nice advantage against Ziggs. Um, but then they can both roam or both affect other lanes in, a, in the same kind of way. They can kind yeah. of, you know, Ziggs has got a long range with his ultimate uh, and, and Ziggs is just, uh, and Fizz is a very good roamer in general. So. Both both could have a lot of potential. And we saw Connor actually hovering over Tiav, so it might suggest that he is quite comfortable as a laner to just go, well, hang on a second, I'm going top. No, I'm going bottom. And just, just getting into these other lanes and getting in there and really trying to trying to get the other lanes snowballing or maybe making his own lead and get and turning that into other people's leads. Yeah, um, he is the bus driver. He is the team. He is the bus driver. And I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. that, you, that, you said, that you saw that I was sort of where I was going with that. <laughs> He's the one who's going to be coordinating this team, but as Fizz is a very aggressive, it's probably going to be a bit more like the movie Speed, where they yes. always had to be above 50 miles an hour, and we're going to see <laughs> Fizz jumping all around the place, like, come on team, we've got to do stuff right now, and that's exactly yeah. what their team's built for as well. Lee Sin, great in the early game, going to be harassing down as much as possible. Jarvan as well, he's jumping in, he wants to get right into the fight, and 
really that, do as much damage as that possible. cataclysm with the uh, with the ultimate from fears is just going to be really nice as a combo because you can yeah. kind of bundle everyone together with a nami bubble and a nami ult uh, you know and just do really kind of compactly bring everyone in to take lots and lots of crazy fish damage and with caitlin she's going to be able to be very safe during that as well as very long as if they catch evelyn and Ziggs in that bubble, and even an Alistair as well. Alistair, as long as they don't group up too closely, he's not going to be able to get out of the Cataclysm by himself because he'll have to flash out and you want to use your flash for engages. Yeah. I'd be interested to see actually if Asian J on this Alistair does decide to do some early roaming because Evelyn is very strong as soon as she gets her red buff because that's where she gets her slow from. Yeah. And if she manages, if they manage to roam, say, to top lane, or actually, yeah, probably to top lane because Fizz is very safe. If they run yep. to top lane and get some early damage down and get that early kill onto Jarvan, that's going to snowball Vlad till he gets to that level 9 and has all of that extra damage from his max rank transfuses, which is what you really want yep. on Vladimir. So, might see an early roaming Alistair as a sort of a, a nerdy jungle lane because they don't know, they know that Tristana's not going to be able to get that CS in the bot lane anyway against a Caitlyn and an army. I think the I think interestingly as well is actually both these top laners have not taken teleport. Yeah. So we're gonna see this kind of island play where Vlad and especially with Vlad as well, who's this top laner who just kinda goes, Well, I don't use resources really. Um I'm just gonna uh, once I've hit level nine, Jarvan, you're not gonna have a good time against me. Yeah. Um and it's, and I've actually I've there's a there's a there's a couple of Vlad builds that are kinda going around at the moment. Um and one is uh, focuses on tank items or, or take one tank mm -hmm. item first and then build damage because actually in the first one to nine levels, you're not going to kill anyone anyway. So you, it's kind of pointless buying damage items um, and really start investing in damage items as, as your second item is a potential build path. And yeah. Jarvan, Jarvan actually, as a laner, has an incredibly powerful or level two all in. You know, that, that flag... Oh. That flag... Um, flag and drag. Combo. Just, just does a lot of damage and makes uh, uh, and it's very difficult to deal with, especially for Vlad as well. If he doesn't, if he doesn't take that pool second, we could see a very aggressive, very aggressive top lane as well. Yeah, definitely could do. Um, it's I, I'm really interested in this game. Both teams look very well matched up. They both they've obviously thought about how they're going to build the team, yeah. how they're going to fight against the opposing team, and we see both the, the roam coming out from Ziggs and from Fizz as well, and the. Caitlyn Nami bot lane against Tristana and Alistair who will have that sustained heal, which will be really good because against a harassed lane like Caitlyn Nami, you want something to keep you up to their speed. You've got the Evan Flow coming out from Nami to keep them healed up, but with Alistair, he can heal up and especially with a Tristana who's clearing those waves quite quickly, that heal will come up cooldown ever so ever so much quicker because it gets reduced by one second for each minion that dies nearby. Now the problem is, is that they also, the Alistair Trist lane is very push heavy like they will tend to shove in very easily oh definitely yeah uh and if caitlin and nambi can manage that way very cleverly under that turret it could open up this lease in to get in there and make a lot of plays as well yeah. um and if and if the junglers and i think this is true for both sides if the junglers can really uh take advantage of the of the of the weaknesses inherent in this bot lane this i think this is going to be where where really the game is probably going to be decided because these ad carries are very very strong in that mid to late game as well not tristana sorry but in that late game certainly that tristana is going to be a very big damage output that they're going to have to deal with oh definitely oh, it's... oh not how bad i am we're talking about how bad you are we are actually yeah, into the game yeah. now though so uh, I, as yeah, much as i'd like to talk game. about how bad you are i think we just we just need to say yeah, we just need that. Like, you're just the worst Worst player of the game ever. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously being ELO boosted up to... Uh, clearly, <laughs> clearly paid for his account. All right, good luck, uh, Bush Diver Connors. They've still got a win under the belt. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see them get one... Well, no, actually, I, I can't say that. I'm unbiased. Hopefully we'll be able to see a good game. Perhaps they'll win, perhaps they'll lose. They are actually invading right now. Lee yes. leading the way into to that I think, blue rush. I think this is a good right idea now. to invade at this point. Yeah. I mean... Um, Vlad is very weak at level one, and especially Ooh, with him oh, about he's gonna to go around the corner. He gets caught out. Focus is gonna go down. So much damage! Oh, he uses that sanguine pool straight away. Nice. Oh, actually, the satchel charge coming out from Zigza as well. I was oh. very shocked to see that skill at level one and sanguine pool and satchel charge at level one. Not that's gonna help them in the lanes tough. at all. I think that's gonna make these lanes very, very tough, especially Vlad against this Jarvan. God. 
that's going to be uh, that's going to be a tough lane um, in those in those first in that first level one because he hasn't got any kind of damaging ability now, which means that Jarvan can definitely trade very very effectively with him. Right, he, he does. Like, Sanguine pool does do damage. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't do any damage. <laughs> like, it does, it's like a, a, dot, a dot that does one damage per 15 seconds or something stupid anyway. Uh, but there is a ward here from the Vibe team. Thresh Vibe's going to put that ward in the bush. Thresh was free in this game. Didn't get picked up. So uh, obviously they didn't really want to go for that really hard engaged team. But Alistair is really hard engaged. They wanted yeah. the sustain. That's what they wanted. I think They didn't think need that's... the extra range from Thresh. So they wanted the sustain. Um... It'll be, I, you know, if we can see some some Afro Moo level plays with this with the, with those flash headbutt pulls, it could be they it could be very exciting stuff. And I like I like the engage from both teams as well. Both both teams can kind of pick and choose when they want to engage and disengage, mm -hmm. which is going to be certainly nice coming into this uh, coming into the mid game later on, uh, when you when you kind of. You, you might not necessarily want to fight or you might get in, you might be in a poor position. You can just kind of say, well, actually, I'm, I'm Lee Sin. I can drag and rage these guys away and we can walk away and not really lose very much. Uh, and Alistair can do very much the same kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. actually, um, we were talking earlier about Tristana pushing down that bot lane. And actually, there's, a, there's still a bug with Tristana's jump where she... Ooh, nice there's the job in level so two. Job going in top lane onto focus. He sanguine pulls away just to keep himself safe, but there's still a bug with this Rasana jump where she's programmed as if she were in her original position until about halfway through it. So leasing ganks, even if Tristana manages to jump away, actually jumping in here onto Nami, gonna take quite a bit of damage that didn't really do that much in return. Alistair wasn't quite on her wavelength, but yeah, leasing with that Dragon's Rage should be able to catch out this Tristana pretty well if he plays it properly. Yes. And uh, and I, we talked about this Jarvan level two though, and you saw you saw how difficult this is. Evelyn coming up in this top lane now though. Yeah, it has to flash away there. Jarvan just trying to be safe, not really wanting to stay around for too long when there is an Evelyn there. Leeson's going to come towards the mid lane. Evelyn actually coming back towards the top lane. She should be able to get a gank off here. Nice safe play here by Jarvan. He knows there's someone about. He pushed it into the tower. And here comes Evelyn towards the bush. There is a ward there, so they know it's there. The spooky ghost guarding the way as much as he can. Lee Sin's towards the middle lane as well. Here comes Jarvan from the side. Lee Sin's deciding not to go in quite yet. They're going to go in now onto the Jarvan. Here it comes Evelyn from the side. He uses that flag and drag to get away, and that's going to be nice and safe for him. Yep, Jarvan playing very, very safe here. CS-wise, about even, which is, which is fine, considering he's had a lot of pressure up in this top lane. So... Um... Just nice safe play from him being very aware that Evelyn can double back round like that and cause a lot of problems if you uh, play her too aggressive. Lee Sin actually wasting a lot of time in mid lane there. The entire time Evelyn was top going for that gank, he was just standing by the mid lane. Uh, now that the experience range has actually been buffed to 1,400, I think it is, he yes, is actually but... in experience range if he's standing in that side bush. So he didn't lose too much sort of experience, but he has taken that away from his mid laner. So I wouldn't be surprised yes. if we saw Ziggs actually hitting... Oh no, Fizz is actually slightly ahead on experience at the moment. So going to be about the same time that they hit that level 5. Yeah, this uh, Fizz seems pretty confident in this matchup by the looks of things. CS wise, they were about they were about even, uh, and con considering that Fizz is melee and and Ziggs is ranged, that you know I thought we'd see a lot more harass coming out mm -hmm. onto that Fizz and really just kind of keep him keep him much lower than even even lower than he is now already. Here comes Evelyn into the bot lane. Yes. Nice actual play here from Loki on this Nami using the Tide Caller's blessing and the auto attack is in the air from Caitlyn does actually allow you to get the buff. Oh, they could have gone in there. Oh, but she was spotted. Yeah, they spotted realized, her yeah, because of that ward. Because of the ward. Lee Sin coming in towards the mid lane. He's going to try and get a gank off on to Ziggs. But Fizz has had to go back. Ziggs didn't use any of his summoners there. So Fizz just taking a bit too much damage in the mid lane. Yeah, I think that kind of exemplifies that, mid, that, uh, that difficulty that Fizz can have in these early levels. Mm -hmm. um, you tend to see Fizz actually go towards that hybrid penetration runes in, the, in those early levels because that level 3 trade can be very, very effective against someone like Ziggs, who's not necessarily very safe. Or not very necessarily very uh, tanky. Uh, Lee Sin going very aggressive, but just satchel charge. Very strong, very powerful skill in terms of um, in that displacement that it can give you. And he's having a, he's a very safe, he's a very safe laner, even though he was nerfed this patch. Yeah, only ever so slightly, though. It's just a, sort of the uh, 
hitbox basically on his bouncing yes. bomb was no. And I think they reduced his base movement speed a little bit as well. Oh, okay, so just a slight nerf that we're really needed because he is just so good at holding out lanes. Like he's almost at the same level as an Anivia after she hits six. Yes. Can't really get anywhere near him as long as he's got that little bit of AP. Has gotten bought that chalice first against just an amplifying tomb and a crystal coming out from Fizz. So we're going to see that Lich Bane rush probably coming from him or a Sheen and then we'll see some other items and then the Lich Bane later on when the extra AP scaling actually does help. Yeah, I think the, I think the Lich Bane rush is very good for Fizz, really. Mm -hmm. um, it just He just scales so well with it and uh, just makes him very powerful in these roams as well, you know. You're able to just get your burst down very quickly and then, and then quickly back away and and I think that will also make his laning easier, you know, if you don't have to trade as much. We see him all throw that ult up, though. Yeah, Chum the Water's coming in mid lane, but he's going to be under the tower that doesn't want to really do anything. Evelyn coming in from the side as well, if she wants to. Lee Sin is around. He hasn't hit six yet, so no Dragon's Rage for him. Obviously, no Agony's Embrace from that level five Evelyn as well. And I just want to draw your attention to the top lane at the moment. Equal CS, and Vladimir is forcing this Jarvan away because of that mana that Jarvan has to use. Vladimir, of course, not based on mana, based on percentage health. Oh, actually going to go in here. Hemoplay's been popped down the Ignite as well. Tick, 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 and there's the boom. And first yes. blood goes down to Vladimir. Superbly played by him. And just Absolutely. a misestimation there by uh, Jarvan. Uh, I think that just exemplifies that Vlad versus Jarvan matchup. If you're not savvy with your mana in lane like that uh, on Jarvan, then you can. Lane. Tide Crawler's placing there, it's used, but nice jump away. Oh, knocks him back into the tower. Usably played there by Alistair. Gets that headbutt in as well. I oh, saw the pulverize in as well, going to knock him up, but he wasn't under tower, so didn't take too many shots. And not level 6 yet, not able to Dragon's Rage anyone in any way. Nice little move there by Asian J. Nice, nice little move with the headbutt just to, uh, to, to save out Tristan then. And, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that you can differentiate good supports from great supports, is if they know when to use part of their combo to get themselves to safety and to save their yes. carry. So like Yeah, well, so he, use, well. he use it as a gap closer yeah. and an escape tool and, and a safety tool. And then he even did a little bit of turret damage onto, uh, onto Lee Sin as well, you know. Yeah. Really it's nice thrash. Like someone comes behind from that tri-bush, you hook them to get yourself out of lane, you jump yeah, the lantern back to get your AD carry out of lane, yeah. and then you flay them under tower. And it gives you a couple of tower shots on them. Your AD carry is there. You're all safe from the enemy AD carry and support. And you can actually sometimes get a counter kill because no one's there to save their jungler. Absolutely. And and, and I think we'll see more plays like that. Jarvan going very aggressive onto Vlad here. Well, he's gone back and got his items. But so has Vladimir. Sanguine Pool being popped. Ignite is down. Nice flash away there. But the flash in as well from Jarvan. Have to remember there's no Ignite here on to Vladimir. So he's going to get chased down. There's ah, the damage. The swag flag. Two tower shots. We are not quite enough, but it's Ziggs Bomb from downtown and Evelyn coming to the <laughs> side as well. Nice Hex Drinker, actually. They're going to keep Jarvan alive for a little He's bit. got that EQ in one. Oh! Flag and drag. He, he had that so drag. close. Half a second on the flag <laughs> drag. <laughs> See Fizz going in mid lane because he knows down. There's Chum the Water's heal is being popped. He's going to tank up a couple of tower shots. There's the kill for Connor. And actually, nicely done there from Fizz going in knowing that Ziggs ultimate was down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nice little play there, and we're seeing, we're seeing that power of Jarvan, actually, and you really can't underestimate that at Jarvan, especially when he builds that Hex Drinker. Ooh, Evelyn coming into the mid lane, though, is Fizz going to be able to escape? Should be able to. Has got the Flash and the Agony's Embrace available. Flash, Agony, Flash away there by Fizz. Going to go in, hate spikes. Is this enough? Moo! Picks up the kill there, Evelyn. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that at some point. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I figured that was coming out. Um, I think that was a little bit of a misplay from, uh, from Connor there. Yeah. Um... Certainly could have used his uh, his urchin strike actually for the gap closer that he needed, and then and then use that troll pole to um, to get himself out. Would have been that little little bit extra distance, but it was a nice flash on the agony's embrace actually. That didn't connect at all. I, I just realised we've got the troll pool and the troll pole. I know it's the it's the, it's the game full of trolls. Yeah, very much so. And of course the uh, double E's and single L junglers as well. Yep. Some damage going down here in the bottom lane. Tiger Lord's Blessing being popped there onto Caitlyn. Going to get that counter engaged down. And look at that. A couple of auto attacks and Welsh Saul is down to about two thirds of his health. They're going to come in here. Here's Evelyn as well. No Agnes Embrace, obviously, but the hate spikes. Nice tidal wave. Oh, the beautiful oh. flash across it with the health wise as well. Gonna, not going to dive under the tower here for Caitlyn because they decide to back away. Oh, it's in the hole. It is not blocked. Agent, Agent J. J. No. And the heal was available as well from Welsh Saul. A bit of miscommunication there but you can't milk those. 
You cannot milk those, indeed. And you know, we've been singing Asian Jay's praises, and actually a gank coming in on Cannibal's this map. coming in here in the top lane. Focus is going to get taken very low. Here's the troll pool, but Cannibal Llama, he might go down to Hema Plate. Oh, no! Gets away! Engage in the mid lane. Trollpole used there to dodge the Mega Inferno bomb and manages to get away. No one dies, but there are fights all across the map at the moment. 15 HP that Lee Sin survived. 15 HP. Wow. This game is, is explosive. It is very explosive and it makes sense. I mean, there's a Ziggs, there's a Tristana. Yeah, it's absolutely. And, uh, those are people who are exploded. Evelyn coming in the top lane. Trying to just use this flag and dragon. There's going to be enough damage. There's no red. Has so there's no flag flow. Hex yeah. drinker as well. They're going to be able, just going to be able to get away from this one. Not going to dive it. Hate spikes do do a lot of damage, but don't really want to dive a Jarvan when he has his flag and drive up. Connor trying to get some damage in the mid lane. Has that sheen. Has another amplifying tome as well. So he's sitting pretty on about 108 AP. Compare that to Ziggs, who's only got 77. That is an extra 30 AP, but you have to remember Ziggs has that extra magic resist from the Chalice of Harmony. Oh, not Chalice. Yeah, Chalice of Harmony. Yeah. I almost now said that Athenes. Chalice of Harmony I thought was, I said uh, Athenes. That Chalice of Harmony was actually nerfed, uh, the, the patch before this. Um, and it's not going to do as much work as it used to, not yeah. just because it's been changed, but also because Fizz does quite a lot of mixed damage. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's going to be a bit of a... It's not as it's going to make him feel safer than he actually is. So we'll see how uh, we'll see how well he how well he kind of realizes. Yeah, of course that. they changed the way that it upgrades into Athenes, didn't they? Because they uh, you don't quite get as much magic as this out of it anymore. They're making it yep. more of a you pick it as a burst. Well, not as, not quite a burst mage, but you have you don't get the extra benefit in mid lane yes. from it anymore. Which you see, oh, trouble water's actually coming out here. But here is Evelyn revealed herself ever so slightly early. There would have wanted yes. her just to wait for a second. And then go in. Lee Sin is here as well. He is a sneaky I think she blind spotted dog. out that Lee Sin in the side brush area yeah. and just thought, well, we need to go on this now or never. Yeah, I just, I think if she stayed to the side for a second, waited for the troll pole to come in, then we wouldn't have the extra escape from Fizz. He hasn't got his flash available, so would have been a lot more ability for them to pick up the kill. But it is four kills to three, 16,000 to 16,000, or 16,000 to 16,000 gold, yeah. 16,500 to 16,500. It's very close in the gold. None of these people have given up too many kills at the moment. And we do see Evelyn in the bot lane, but there's a ward in that second bush. So as soon as Loki comes towards it, we're able to spot him out. Or her yes. out, I don't know. I'm not judging, not sexist. It's a, it's a person. <laughs> Evelyn is a person. Okay, oh, jumping in here. <laughs> so oh, Nice muster shot across to the side there. Lucky tidal wave comes in. No, oh, the heal as well. Is it going to be enough? The exhaust is down on Caitlyn. They're chasing down the wrong person. Chase the one with no health, you idiots. And they're going to go in there. The Nami goes down, but Moo gets taken out. Is that enough damage on Wolfsaw? Not quite enough. And Alistair tanking up his tower for a few shots. He can't tank up anymore. Here comes Lee Sin, the blind monk, jumping, diving, dodging oh, the side. Most all gets picked up. Kano coming down from the river as well. He is a fish in his natural waters. Asian J, you have no chance here. You might not be able to milk those, but you can certainly use you for a hamburger. That, a nice, a ni or a nice attempt at a little move there from... Uh... Oh, actually, a uh, Hema play coming in the top lane. Oh, Jarvan. You are a blood donor. Gives up his kill there to Vladimir, and that is another kill for him. 2 1 and 1 in the top lane. 96, yes. Actually, beating out that Jarvan even before he hit level 9. Really well played. Fresh vibes are making good moves. Getting, making mo good moves in these lanes. Uh, or they're trying to make good moves in, the, in, in this top lane, certainly. And this Evelyn has been. Mu has been getting into these lanes, but great little reaction there from Fizz to roam down with the Lee Sin mm -hmm. and just pick up those stragglers on that. Sloppy tower dive? It was a bit weak. I felt like they just needed to take down that fit. They needed to take down the Nami, and then yeah. it would have been five. It's just like, it's right there. It's like, I felt like Joe Miller when they were taking down the tower in season three World Championship. It's just like, hit the fucking tower, you idiots. Like, just yeah, kill exactly. the support, and then you can kill the other one. Yes. The, the less time they have two champions, the better it is for you. Absolutely, and, uh, I, you know, that. Just if they'd have finished her off, I think they underestimated their damage on her, and uh, and it just gave them a little bit too long and just too much damage here and there, and and then Tristana was fanning around, waiting to try and rocket jump back or trying to get back, and Alistair was unsure, and I think that shows. And I mean, this happened. We talked about this last week, or I talked about this last week. Uh, Thresh vibes seem to have a little small number of issues with communication, and yeah. I think there it showed because I mean, Asian Jay is a, is a new addition to the team, I believe. 
Um, and it and it showed, and it showed that it wasn't necessarily as smooth and as well-oiled machine as it could def- as it could be. That, that's experience, though, isn't it? You see Absolutely. these teams who've played together for three, four years, and they know exactly what the other person's going to do without having to say it. And I find it as well with the people I play with, like every other night or so, they know how I play, they know my mindset. And if you've got someone new to the game, especially someone playing such a heavy roaming, such a heavy engaging champion like an Alistair, you need to be able to read their moves a little bit better. And they obviously they just don't have this nice roam to the top lane here yes. by bus, Connor, the bus driver Connor and Cannibal Llama here as well in the least in Chunder Waters. Don't think that was necessary, but they do pick up the kill. Nicely done, and goes across to Fizz as well. He's doing very well. Nice combo there by Alistair. Going to get some damage down to Caitlyn, but here comes Evelyn as well. They're going to be able to get in on this there. Not Tidecrawler's Blessing coming out as well. Oh, she's coming in the side. Agnes is going to be used any second now. Nami's well. not used yet. Nami. Okay, this is good. They focus down the fish. They manage to take it out. And that's very nicely done by them. And they're going to have some fish and chips tonight. It's Friday. Oh, no, it's not Friday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. So they can't have the English sort they're of... They're diving onto this They're diving. Nicely done. Ziggs. Oh, as well. But that's not going to hit. Welsh Sword picks up the kill. Alistair, a couple too many tower shots. He's going to go down. I can't believe it. Jigging. Jigging picks up Asian J. He's having sushi for himself. Here comes Lee Sin from the side. Cannibal Lana going to jump onto him. Move it. Here comes Fizz. The second fish in this fight. Well, Saul, you are in a bad position. He's going to go down. Dragon's Red kick into the tower. And Move does manage to escape. He's going to run away. Nice yeah. Sonic wave from Lee Sin, though. Nice yeah, Sonic. Nice Sonic wave to hit him up. Yeah. Jarvan taking down that turret evens up the gold. Yeah. Which is nice. And uh, now they're looking towards that dragon, which is just a great little, great little move. We see action in that bot lane. We see Lee Sin and Fizz come down every time, realizing that something bad is happening and, and that they need to react to it. Get down there, clean up, because Asian J and Welsh Thor stick around too long, and then they take the dragon off it. And this is, this is a little bit of inexperience that, that, need, that they need to kind of tidy up a little bit. I Get the kills the other thing and back that was Yeah, sorry. Sorry for interrupting you, actually. No, that's uh, fine. The other thing about that was laying Mantis had used the Mega Inferno Bomb, and it missed, which meant yes. that they had in these games. Yes, Cannibal Llama with that Sonic Wave Resonating Strike has a good way of securing it. It's like, at least with the Venomous Bites as well can secure it quite well. Yeah. But you do risk out Laying Mantis chucking a 500 extra damage in there and you're not quite sure what's going to happen. So, I like as you said, we saw Thresh Vibes just extending a little bit too far. Didn't tank up the tower correctly as they didn't do last time. And I just... Yes, they're getting kills. And yes, that's great for them. And yes, Tristana will scale better sort of between level 14 and 18 than Caitlyn as long as she positions properly. But I feel they're just a bit too over-eager sometimes. They've got an Alistair and they're like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I'm a man. Oh. Yeah. And, just and this, is, this actually is when Tristano is her weakest. This is her, yeah. this is her typically poor mid-game. And, mm -hmm. and so at this point in the game, actually, I think we should be seeing Asian J with those boots of mobility going, well, hang on a second. I'm going to leave Tristano to kind of safely farm because she's got roughly the same range as Caitlyn now. And I'm just going to kind of go and disappear off and punish Jarvan, or I'm going to go and disappear off and punish Fizz. And that's kind of what I think he should be doing as a support, yeah. is actually trying to make moves around the map and just leaving Tristana to try and try and farm through this mid-game. this mid game. Mm -hmm. And we see as well, every time they see Moo on that Evelyn in bot lane, they push an objective. They go for that mid lane, they go for something else. They're actually rotating towards Dragon here. Cannibal Lama getting taken quite low. Agnes and Brace coming in. Nice jump up there by Connor using that trouble. He flashes away. Nice Dragon's Rage as well, but here comes Russell. Blade of the Moon can be popped. He's going to save God away. Flash in. Is it going to be enough? No! He knocks him away. The buster shot to safety there, and just not quite in the position that you wanted to. Loki coming in from the side with a tidal wave as well. Going to keep everyone nice and secure. Connor there on that fizz. Going to try and protect this tower as much as he can. And Caitlyn coming in from the side. Not the best position. They're going to use that 90 caliber net to get himself across to safety. And going to be able to push out this wave as soon as it comes in. And again, just a little bit of miscommunication. Like, who were they going for? Were they going for Connor? Were they going for Lee Sin? Lee Sin's so safe if you've got safeguard up. But you just jump away. And we saw that exactly right there. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think they were really oh, trying to make... Oh, the waters things. misses by a mile. Exhaust has gone down. Connor's going to get knocked miles into his team. Jump across there by Welsh Sword. It's not going to be enough, though. He used that troll pole again. And they just don't like to keep that fish on dry land. Trying to get him back into the river, but not able to push him that far. He manages to get himself away to safety. Yeah, these engages are very difficult to get right. If, if Fist doesn't land the Chum the Waters, or Lee Sin doesn't land that Sonic Wave, or Nami doesn't land her, her, her Tidal Wave, it's just it's not going to come together yeah. for, uh, for these guys. And, if, and, and you're starting to see the, the inexperience kind of shine through. And, and, 
And I think, I think the goal difference at the moment is not sort of displaying that fact, but it's gonna start to happen. You've seen, you see a lot of vision coming out from Thresh Vibes. Um, and now that they've got this vision and bus driver Connor doesn't have that same level of control of the map, we're going to start to see these guys, these Thresh Vibes, to sort of strangle them in. And you can see that with the way the Vlad is playing. He's so safe in that top lane. He hasn't even got, he hasn't got teleport. Uh, he's running, he hasn't got really um, sort of any defensive items, but he's just able to be so hyper aggressive against this Jarvan and force him to itemize completely against him because he just can't deal with him. Um, simply because they had decent vision in that top side jungle uh, and decent pressure in that bottom side of the map and they could kind of force them into these kind of split decisions and just just Vlad just taking over this top lane. Vlad happens. You know, you get to this you get to this power point, you've got second rank in your ultimate, you've nearly maxed your um, Tides of Blood. Uh, you've maxed your Tides of Blood by this point and you're just, you're just so unkillable and just tanky. Yeah, it's... I, it Considering we thought that Vlad would be uh, a little bit passive and not really get any kills until sort of level 9 or so, it's been a very bloody top lane with that Vlad up there. And, Absolutely. Ooh, I was mega in front of him not coming in, managing to connect there, but here comes the Cannibal Llama and Connor from the side as well. Chum the Waters flashed away from the Dragon's Red kick there. Nicely done. Connor is jumping onto that back lane though. He's going to have to back away. Oh, nice oh. bubble there hitting up two people. Moo is caught out. Cannibal Llama and that Lee Sin in the back lane. Caitlyn is very low. He's going to have to pound away at this bull as much as he can. And there's Connor going down as well. Beautiful fight here. Welsh all going to jump in on to Jiggin and the heel comes out. Loki is there as well. Zig's actually getting killed there by the Fizz and Vlad getting the kill on Caitlyn. Well, Saul is going to dive in. He's got that reset on his jump, but he's going to back away now. Going to be able to push. And that was a beautiful, beautiful fight there from Thresh Vibes. That bubble from from Nami was fantastic when she hit that on the uh, on the on the um, well, Saul and that just it wasn't enough to save them, and that just kind of shows how when they work together as a team. Fresh Vibes have got just great team fight. And they can just move, maneuver around and jump in and out. And they baited Lee Sin that, to the back line, picked him off with the Blade of the Rune King, and just then, right, okay, well, we've killed this guy. Now Fizz has come diving in. Let's, well, hang on a second. We've killed Lee Sin. Let's kill, let's kill Fizz. And the focus was very kind of methodical. Uh, and, you know, you'll just see, and then you just see them Finish the team fight, get some more vision out. Let's go back to base, buy up some more items because we won that team fight, and we'll let's come back again and just can try and compound on more and more gold advantage and try and get something out of these and can try and get more out of the map. Mm -hmm. I think the main issue I had with that team fight was uh, we saw that. Bus driver Connor tried to engage it with Cannibal Llama on that lease and coming in the side yes. trying to get the Dragon's Rage off. He still got that up. He didn't use it in the team fight. Um, and Ziggs, of course, flashed away from that. Connor tries to jump into the back line as well, but Jiggin on Caitlyn was at less than a third health when it all started. And that was the issue, because she couldn't get past Alistair. She had to stay behind it. As soon as she went close to Alistair, she'd just get knocked up and die. And that's actually going to be a dragon fight at the moment. Connor getting knocked up. Not the best target, but the Cannibal Llama taking so low. The red buff as well on Welsh Saul here on this Tristana. Blue team gets that dragon. Exhaust going down onto Kayleen. Don't really want to jump in here. Welsh Saul. Nice headbutt there. Beautiful. Jiggin's going to get taken out. Beautiful bomb as well. Hick it up from the side. Vladimir is there as well in this fight. Jarvan's going to get taken out. He goes down. Moo picks up that one. Everyone's so low under this tower as well. All about half health. And Vlad is around, as Tristana does have her jump available if she wants to go in. Decides not to, going to push back, get this first tower in the bottom lane. And that's going to push him even further into the lead. And you said this, Grosh, you said they're going to start using their advantages, using the extra gold that they have to push themselves into a commanding gold lead. And this is where they're headed. Well, that's exactly it. And, it, and they were able to see, they were able to see Bus Driver Connor coming in because of that vision that they have around those two entrances to that dragon pit, they're able to... Like, Alistair's just such this amazing kind of linebacker guy, you know? Yeah. He just stands there and he goes, right, this is, this is our place. And Ziggs does the same kind of job. He stands there and goes, these are, these are our... This is our zone. You can't come into this. And just... And, you know, he just blocks that. in the hole doesn't get through to the back line. I was, just want to say... I was a very good cameraman there. Followed the ace in the hole as it came out around the side. Connor actually going to try and jump in here. But it's Vladimir. And he's very tanky. You got that Will of the Ancients and Zonyas. We are going to see a golden people at some point. It's going to happen, I believe. Yeah, course, I, think, I don't think he'll let us down. Mere focused is... Yeah. He, I, he's good guy, Vlad. You know, there's no, there's no way he's not going to... Uh, he's going to people Vlad for us. Yeah, that's just the, he kind of has to. It's mandatory. Yeah. Good guy, Vlad. Takes away your blood so you don't have to donate.
Yes, that's exactly I mean. it. Yeah. Um, Connor, he's he's doing well statistically on this on this fizz, but his chum the waters have not been as on point as they need to be. Um, because it's a significant amount of his damage. You know, they're doing almost 600. They're doing 600 magic damage on that on that ultimate in AOE. If he doesn't hit that, you know, that's a, that's so much of his burst combo just down that he's that he's basically. Ooh, just started jumping in here on the bot lane. Nami is there as well. Chicken's gonna get taken straight out, and Nami, no, you are not in a good position. Actually, wow. Okay, okay, that was okay. Uh, that was either misplay from Tristana, or the most gorgeous tidal wave I have ever seen in my life. Because as Tristana wound up her jump, she wasn't even in the air. The tidal wave hit her and it cancelled the animation. So she didn't get the reset and wasn't able to jump onto Nami. So either beautiful play from the support, which is what I'm going to say. Yeah, absolutely. Or Tristana totally fucked up. <laughs> Let's not say that one. Let's say she played well. She's 7-3, and three, doing well in that bot lane. Going to build towards her Infinity Edge. And here comes the damage onto Vladimir. He pops the Hemo Blade down only on one person. Might have waited for a couple more seconds there. There's the trouble. Zonya, 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 Zonya. Doesn't quite get it up. And here comes Jarvan onto the side. Oh, he's going to chase back around. Nice ward there into the bush. Going to see that Vladimir Sonograve missing though. Jarvan's going to keep fighting. No one is anywhere near this, but there is a fight in the bottom lane while all of this is that going. Jarvan just we'll doesn't switch do down there at the same time. He's going to keep chasing Jarvan in the top lane, of course, trying to chase down. Oh, he's taking so low as well. Down to about a third of his HP. And Vlad, of course, healing up as much as he can. There's a fight in the Lane. Connor going in, so much damage from the waters does hit, but Alice in the back line, bubble misses as well, here comes the ace in the hole, damage onto Evelyn, Moo getting taken very low, Vlad is still fighting up in the top lane, and Nami goes so close to going down, not quite enough though, Lee Sin and Jarvan had to back away from the top lane, and that was nicely played by Vlad, got two people in the top lane, they engaged in bot lane in a 3v4. That Vlad's Will of the Ancient is doing ridiculous amounts of work, and the amount of healing it was just giving him and just you know and you can see the itemization that this Jarvan's had to go yeah to keep himself healthy in this lane but now he just can't do anything to him you know yeah, um, and you kind of run this as Jarvan you're building spirit massage where's your life steal doesn't have any life steal yes it gives him some magic resist but the whole point of spirit massage is that it buffs up your life steal and you get extra health back when you use skills but He's not really got any inherent no. life gaining ability so he I think the Banshee spell would have that. been just just a better item all yeah. around for him, in, because it transitions better into team fighting. It transitions mm -hmm. better into into this into into joining up as a team than than this spirit visage. Yeah, especially uh, against a Tristana who can try and knock you back, against a Ziggs, against an Evelyn with the Agony's Embrace, against an Alistair as well. You need that spell shield every twenty seconds. Well, I'm surprised that we didn't see him go towards some kind of sustain, like even just the Vamp Scepter, just to give him a little bit of AD and life steal. Just might have helped him to kind of keep even against the. Uh, against the Vlad, who's just this yeah. kind of sustained monster now. It's like, there's that's a, that's a, an old saying in League where, especially in top lane, if you're ahead, build HP because you're a bruiser and so you just want to do as much damage as possible and the longer you're alive, the easier it is to do that. Absolutely. If you're behind, you build damage because you, yeah. tr you have to try and burst them down because they're going to be like tanky as a tanky thing. As we can see here on the Vlad, got the Will of the Ancients, got his Zonyas as well, Alice's as well, it's hugely tanky at the moment and you need to be able to burst them down as quickly as possible or to sustain yourself up after you've lost a fight, which would be great if you built a Ravenous Hydra or even just a Tiamat. Really be Some able to keep himself alive. Something to kind of keep the Vlad shoved out and something to maybe keep himself topped up would have been beneficial. I don't think to world going towards the Ranger and Sunfire Cape is the option for him, really. No. Um, Especially when Lee Sin's so tanky as well because it means that as soon as Lee Sin comes to a gank, you still can't do anything because neither of you have any damage. Absolutely, and he's gone for that Iron Solari, so he doesn't even have the benefit of having that Sightstone, which allows, which gives him so much power. Mm -hmm. You know, Elysian's kit is built or assumed around the fact that you can use wards uh, and ward mechanics in some way. Um, and if he doesn't have that, 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 those wards available to him, you can't do these insect moves, yeah, as they're so as they're called. Um, and I think that. Is gonna is is in, in, you know although he's doing very well it inherently makes him weaker than he should be or yeah. could be. I, the thing about that uh, locket of the iron solari I really liked it when they first built it like it yeah. was very very nice because if Jarvan built a, a damagey you have that extra magic resist for your entire team against the Ziggs against the Vlad against an Evelyn that's beautiful 
really yeah, absolutely. good sort of team coordination. But, oh, Dragon's Edge Kick actually coming in. Knocked up by the Tidal Wave. Wow. Well, well, sure, well out of position there. Bubble doesn't land on anyone. There comes the Ziggs Bomb as well. The pool has been, uh, sorry, the Zonius has been used. So much damage coming down. Kenan gets his kill. They're going to jump onto Moo. Alistair is still there and alive, but he's going to be able to get away from this one. Going to try and run towards the side. Flashes across the wall. He will be safe for now. Lee Sin is on the hunt. He is blind and he is chasing as much as he can. Alistair goes across there. There's the ace in the hole. It's not enough. It is not enough. And Alistair is going to be able to get away from this one. Running I take I take it all back. I proc and should be able to great get away. Talisman of Ascension. Lee yeah, Sin. he's out. He's yeah, got boots. He's away from there, but Vlad still pushing top lane. So no, I take it. I take it all back. I take it all back. <laughs> Cannibal Armor is a god. <laughs> I take it all back. I take it all back. Cannibal Armor. You know that Nami tidal wave was lovely. It hit absolutely everyone that it needed to hit. Uh, and then the Lee Sin, the Sonic Wave, Dragon Rage, straight onto that Tristana. She was deleted. It was like, I don't care that you have seven kills because now your DPS is zero. Yeah. You do no damage because you are dead. And then that was it. Fizz, he's got the, you know, he's just got that kind of, when you get the momentum going in those fights where you can just like, what, we rolled one, we rolled over two, you kind of Fizz just keeps going and going and going. And he does really good sustained damage with that W and, and the Urchin Strike as well, being on, and the, and the Playful Trickster, to be honest, being on such a low cooldown. Mm -hmm. Um, he was just able to just keep momentum going as well there, and just... I, I don't think Bus Driver Connor are out of this in any capacity. Oh, definitely not. Only 4,000 gold behind, and they have five towers that they can get that haven't... that the other team don't have anymore. They've yeah. got a dragon. Like, as much as it's good to get towers, you have to remember when you're thinking about your advantage that if the other team gets those towers as well, that gets them that much closer to your gold. And actually, Vlad getting taken out very low here in the top lane. <laughs> Zonya's after the pool. Is he going to actually go down? I think Kenny should have chased this one a little bit, but the inhibitor is being pushed in the bot lane meanwhile, so they had to back away a little bit. Nami needs to get away from this focus. Okay, this is the longest battle in the history of battles. The, the inhibitor is actually going to go down in this bottom lane. Vlad <laughs> is still getting chased, and he's just, look at that. Just like, oh, no, no, I'm going to go this way. Um, excuse me, sir, do you have a moment to speak about Sanguine? He's got trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He comes back up. He's going to be back up by the end of this fight. Is there a ward? There is. Oh, ties of blood not going to quite connect. They're at least trying to come in the back. But they're going for the Nexus turrets. Look at this, pushing themselves as far as they can. Jarvis going to have to back away. <laughs> and Vladimir, that entire time, was just like, oh, excuse me, sir, I would like to talk about uh, this transfusion here. <laughs> uh, I would like to tell you all about our, our wonderful, powerful overlord, Will of the Ancients, and all of the sustain that it gives me. <laughs> Just incredible sustain. He's back up to almost full health already. <laughs> it does have three levels on that Jarvan, though. An extra 70 CS. Oh, they're jumping in onto Caitlyn. She's going to go very low. Look at that. She stands still at the end. Knows that she's dead. Infinity That's Edge, Phantom Dancer, Blade of the Moon King is just too strong. Good move from Asian J there. Even though the... Uh... Even though the ult landed from Fizz, he kept him safe from being followed up by that playful trickster. Yeah, Agnes and Brace coming in here. Nami going to take him very low. He jumping in there, back line. Connor is on Welsh soul, but he managed to survive for now. Here comes Jarvan from the side. He's going to jump. Oh, jumps away. Fizz very low. He gets taken out by that red buff and the head spikes as well. Vladimir's still pushing up in the top lane. Oh, this happened. Dragon's Rage coming in. Oh, Buster shot it away. Cannibal Llama. You can jump and you can jive, but you can't get that close to a Tristana without her knocking you away. I think Nami might go. No, gets on to the Nexus just in time. Managed to see it up, but the first Nexus Tower is getting pounded away from here by oh. Stress Rives. They're going to keep going for it. The cow is hitting it as hard as he can. Not the best auto attack damage on an Alistair, but with a Lich Bane, if you build some AP. Cataclysm coming in. Oh, nice satchel charge there. Going to knock Ziggs out. The ace in the hole blocked off there by Alistair. Again, Agent J, beautiful play here. Mega Explosive Bomb comes in. Jarvan going very low. They might just go for the Nexus. He's going to go down to the Hemo Plague. It does. Nexus down onto half health. Jigging is trying to fight against a Vlad, but look at the damage. And there's the Nexus going down. Thresh Vibes take it in a 34-minute epic game. Wow. That game wow. was explosive. <laughs> I've lost my voice. I'm done. Like We've got three other games or something to cast tonight. You're going to have to do it by yourself, mate. Oh, man. This is good. This is good. This is good. <laughs> man, these games are exciting as hell. Are we on... Yeah. Um... We're still on. Yeah, we're still Excellent. live. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you just yeah, you just asked me if we're still live while we're still live. And now everyone can hear us talking about how we're still live. And it's what I really wanted to ask you was, <laughs> what? are we still live? Are we... Going to pick an MVP, and who is it going to be? I think I think we should pick an MVP. I mean, it was 19 kills to 14 for Thresh Vibes in the end. They were 57,000 gold to 49,000 gold. In I want I, I want to give it to Vlad. Yeah, he was a bro. He was a bro. He was such a bro. I was thinking like at the start and in the middle, I was like, oh, Alistair. 
Like he played yeah. superbly. After a couple of bad tower dives, they really got their coordination together. And yeah, I, we're both support players, and so yeah, maybe absolutely. we're a bit biased towards support. But no, I think I think Asian J had moments of utter brilliance. Like you the know? time when he headbutted Caitlyn back across the wall near White and got that safe, and then the time he he ate the chum of the water so that it wouldn't hit Tristana. Yeah, and knocking and he saved Tristana away. from the from the fizz diving like so many times. Yeah, yeah. it's just beautiful play by him, and that was really play. good team composition as well because they. They picked that Alistair after the Fizz, and they were like, well, Fizz jumps onto my AD carry. Fuck you. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Just... Um, and Nami, I wouldn't say Alistair has the easiest time in lane against Nami. Oh, no, all. definitely not. Nami played really well as well. I, gotta, but I think it, it has to be. It has to be Vlad, though. Yeah. Vlad. Because he was the quintessential troll, yeah. which is how you play Vlad. Yeah. It's I, you, Vlad, bro. He was just like, you, Vlad, bro. <laughs> It was absolutely gorgeous. Well played by Mere Focus. 4-2-2, two, two, but with 309 CS, had the most gold in the game yeah. and was a good 70 CS ahead of his lane. So much so pressure and just created, uh, just created opportunities in the map because he just yeah. forced Lee Sin to keep coming up there and not get anything from it, which is incredible. In fact, he was 1v2 and just still just went, nah, this is not going to happen, guys. And I'm, I'm totally safe. Yeah, so well played there to Mere Focus. So Thresh Vibes do take their win. Bus driver Connor still looking for their first win of the tournament. Not quite able to get it there, I'm afraid. But we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, guys. I think we're going to start around 9.20 with the next game. 10-minute yes. break. Just so we can get ourselves organised and into a lobby. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. I've been Sona, and my co-cast has been Grosh, the wonderful, the beautiful, the magnificent, etc., etc. <laughs> and we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Stay tuned.